Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, welcome to RPV City Talk. I am Liz Brown Swanson and it's always a great honor to be here with our Mayor of RPV, Mayor Susan Brooks. Hello. Happy summer, I've been gone for the summer and you've had a good one and an exciting summer. We have had an exciting summer. We've had a lot going on. I guess I should start out by saying that um, the biggest excitement for me was that I just became a first-time grandmother, and I'm so proud. We, um, this little boy, his name is Luke, had a little traumatic entrance into the world, but um, he's already been on a helicopter in an ambulance and on a ferry, so in less than uh, two weeks of life, um, but He's a big baby, and that was the boy. issue, and he's a beautiful boy. So when you see that picture, just just give him a little kiss for me because he did have a real difficult time in the beginning. Baby so Luke. we anticipate and, everything's going to be And okay. special that you were able to go and be there. Yeah, we were rushed there. Uh, I was in New York at the time, and um, Mom and Dad came up, and uh, we were there with our kids to okay. be there because they needed support going through this. Congratulations on becoming Thank you. a grandmother. And I did ask the mayor, what is she going to be called? You know, Mayor Granny or right. whatever. We'll have Mayor Grandma. So we're taking a contest. Anybody with good ideas? In my family, we were either Nana or Grandma. And they both sound too old to me. So we'll come up if anybody it. has another idea, I'm part Italian, so Nona is, is Italian, right? right. So what's well, Irish or German? <laughs> I know that uh, you will come up with a good yeah, one, we will. and we'll you'll be a great gra you'll be a wonderful grandmother. Not you're not a great grandmother. Someday I'll be grandmother. hopefully a great grandma. Well, anyway, but moving on to great news also happening yes, in the city. Yeah. A lot going on this summer. Um, what do you think has probably been the biggest issue that city staff and the council was able to accomplish? So you far know, it summer? continues to be San Ramon. Uh, San Ramon is moving with light speed. Uh, lightning speed, I should say. I mean, they've already completed the portion from the slant drain to the beach and to the exit hole. So you can already see that down there. And that was tough. And we did a little show on that and showed people what it was like. Now they're on the port um, going up to 25th Street and up the actual slope. Who knows? Maybe they'll be done ahead of time. Wow. But they are so conscientious. And the um, everyone that passes by on the switchbacks and, and addresses this issue, knows firsthand how important this is. I mean, it's a, such a safety issue, and it, it's going to really, um, I'm sure, secure a lot of people's minds about the stability of everything. Right. And, of course, you said it's moving the full speed ahead now, but it took a long time to finally get to this point and a lot of money. It's a $20 million project, and I think half of it's from a state grant. Is funding right. all coming together. Right, nine and a half and nine and a half. So, so it's, it's all... We're right now, and the council has made the commitment, and we're moving forward, and we're looking at other additional funding options going forward um, once we get our infrastructure report card going. Well, people can Ooh. travel up PV Drive East, the switchbacks, and see yes. it all playing out. It's it's pretty exciting. And you were out on the scene, you said. Yes, it well, was great. You know, it was so. really a, wonderful people working here and uh, on this project. So. Well, good. We'll keep updating us. When hopefully, in an ideal world, when would it really be complete? I mean, what was you're saying? Uh, April. They're saying April. Okay. I wanted to go in the tunnel, but they said if I wanted to go in the tunnel, I'd have to take a two-hour training course. Okay. So that was a little too much. Something tells me you're going to take that course. I don't between know. Between all the I'm other meetings and things that you're doing. <laughs> Um, this week, Council met, of course, remember, reminding all of our residents, first and third Tuesdays of the month, City Council meets to go and, and either watch it on, on Channel 33 or be there um, to talk about some of the key matters that came up at this past meeting. Um, I know, for example, Captain Bolin was there presenting his crime update. Talk about yes. him first because it's always about safety. Sure, public safety, as we always say, is job one in public infrastructure. But... Uh, uh, Captain Bolin was there. Uh, he was going to attend last month, but National Night Out took place, and Gail Lorenzen, um, we, we gave uh, her a commendation. She runs the Neighborhood Watch program, and she's been doing it for 21 years, and she is just an angel in, in many of our minds. And so we did give her a commendation, but, and Captain Bolin uh, talked about some of the crime stats recently, because th there have been a lot of there's been a lot of talk and a lot of discussion. And as it turned out, the actual residential burglaries, um, they stayed the same 
They were at 44 this mm -hmm. time last year, this time this year, so they did not increase. But what did increase significantly, um, even between the first and second quarter, were vehicle thefts and larcenies, and uh, actually by 152%. So there were um, 23 and I think 22 and 53, uh, and the and that was just between the first quarter and the second quarter. And why why is this happening? Um, well, because people are leaving their car doors unlocked, and people are not acknowledging the fact that we're in a different, changing time. We do have the realignment program with the governor. We are we are fighting that, by the way, with the um, League of California Cities. Um, but at least to make sure that there are backup reserves and people to help back up this, um, this release of all these prisoners. But what we believe is, uh, has been organized, there was one individual and he explained she's at large and uh, this individual is going down a skateboard and just flipping up all the dar da car handles. And 37, they had 37 in one night after just a couple of hours, cars unlocked in the community. And the officers went to each door, and they knocked on the door, and they met, made contact with the homeowner, and they explained to them, you know, lock it or lose it. Well, and that's the program. program right? So when you see, you, they're going to be coming around the community to do this. One of the things we really encourage, you know, the, the city was established really to encourage people to use their garages. I know that sounds like a unique thought, but um, it really is true. We want people to use their garages at least use your driveways. Try to pull your cars off the street because the street is probably the biggest lure of mm -hmm. all. But um, I know my three cars are parked to... in front of my house. I'm completely guilty of that. Are they in, in the street? Are you the in street. the street? Yeah, I'll have to work on that. And so we have been very Where's your garage? Did you? I'm in Seaview and I have a garage. Um, and we have a long driveway, but obviously, it's, you know, it's easiest is it's, is if when they're up front. And I've been fortunate that we have never had an issue. Right. But we are really good about locking the cars and making sure nothing's in sight. Right. You know, don't make opportunity makes a thief. Really. Right. But you lock the car. I mean, as uh, as Deputy Lopez, um, uh, not Lopez, um, David Deputy Rosa Joseph. said, he said uh, people have to learn to stop putting their unlocked their keys in their unlocked cars. The keys to the house in their unlocked cars, because that that helped with some so of these other. You're saying the captain is out shot. there with this lock it or lose it program, and that is basically their the officers are going knocking door to door. Are they putting notes on cars. Well, they're putting notes on cars, but he said for these they did make personal contact. That's but good. as they progress with this program, they'll be and probably since, doing more. I don't know if there's anything else that was important that the captain brought, brought up at the meeting regarding just crime prevention. Uh, I, I think the key was that you know the the, the sheriff's department is is on it and uh, if you compare us to neighboring cities you're going to see that the level of protection is um, is of service is very good right. and that we have we pay a very um, we get a great deal for our money well, with the LA County Sheriff's Department let's right. put it that way contracting them you have the three other cities yes. in Lomita and um, we know that they're doing amazing work, as we today both got to yes. visit Lamita Station. Right. They unveiled, the uh, Captain Bolden had a press conference. They have purchased a $40,000 mobile uh, unit that will go out. It's emergency like a command unit. center, right. emergency command, command center, center that, that we'll see around the peninsula if, uh, well, on an emergency, but also mm -hmm. they'll take it out in the community. What, what did you think about that, having that now, that extra piece of equipment to be used by law enforcement? It's going to be astounding because in the event of something very serious, everything will be there. I mean, they have access to virtually a complete living quarters in this unit. And the fact that it's mobile and emergency, I mean, it sort of addresses some of, I think, our concerns on the council about certain areas of the city that are not as protected because they're further away from the, right. the I was impressed with this, this trailer that we'll take out, and uh, they said They'll open up the whole front. Yeah, they said, and I said, like you know, for example, like where would you? What really is the need? And they said, for example, when you had that diver that went, was lost at Terranea, they could be down there for the day. It's a great, it's a great way for them to really gather information right. and keep the community safe. So that was people can exciting. even sleep in that um, yeah. trailer. Yeah, it's they it's, can convert the seating areas. So. So we will, again, we'll have more information on that, and we'll let people know when it's going to come into the community because they are going to take it to community events besides using it for emergencies to, to share it with the community so they can... I think can we're going to have it at City Hall in one of the upcoming meetings oh, before good. the meeting. So, 
He's talking about patrols. How about updating us on the trail patrol update? What's going on with patrolling our trails? Yeah, this summer um, I was um, privileged to um, to attend the picnic of the Land Conservancy. That they uh, and at that picnic uh, over at Point Vicente Interpretive Center nice. outside, it was just beautiful. They were just great. They they coordinated all the people who had gone through the training for the volunteer trail patrol. And as we know, this is not um, an, a, an enforcement type of thing. It is more of an education, eyes and ears, kind of like Neighborhood Watch, helping to educate the community about um, using the trails and use of the trails. And new signage is being placed. You've probably seen a lot of it coming in already. Yep. So we're making great strides. And starting this fall, the, the trail patrol will be, will be out there. Our trails are amazing. I'm up they there. are. It's a city We're within so a city. Who have. knew? I mean, I didn't know we had all those trails until yeah. we got back there. Well, yeah, the, pre the preserve is unbelievable to go out and be able to hike in that. Um, since we're talking about trails, I want to backtrack. I've been jumping around a little bit um, back to this week's city council meeting and issues that you had to address. One of them was um, Abalone Cove yes. and improvements. Um, again, a beautiful <clears> resource for the community to have. What's going on with the plans to improve that area? Well, the um, count, they're going to go out to bid now. It was about $665,000. It's a county, it was a, um, uh, this was a, a partial, this was a partial grant. And uh, we are looking at, um, uh, right now, you know, compressed granite and adding playground equipment and some, just some very low-key benches and, you know, not to make it some big, spec, you know, huge activity we're trying to keep there. yes we're trying to keep this low key and so the council gave i think clear direction that we did we wanted to stay within budget um because we really we this council is more fiscally conservative to the extent that we want us to, when we set a budget we'd like to see us not go outside those parameters right. but you do have a grant to help fund this project we right? do and uh, yes, and and that's wonderful. So I guess the point is, um, we want to do what is important um, for the people, not expand beyond the need right. on any of the th projects that we have that have these grants. You know, sometimes grants come with strings, right. and you have to weigh the price of the strings to the value of the grant. And so sometimes um, it's just worth doing it um, to the minimal standards. Right. I remember when, Abal need. when there was discussions in the very beginning about what, how we could improve Abalone Cove. It is a tremendous resource for the community, and the public really does like, like utilize that. I mean, there was big, grandiose ideas. And through meetings, I mean, you've really had a lot of community outreach. Which oh, I think yes. Yeah. We were talking about the staff, is, and, and this council has been really focused on doing community outreach and saying, what does the community even want to happen? Right, and, and that was an issue because it, at Bellone Cove originally there was a huge plan for it and the community, uh, there were focus groups that were created and they weighed in very heavily, you know, along with the San Ramon project and along with the now the quarterly preserve forums. The, the preserve is having quarterly forums, so if people are concerned about any of the um, enforcement or the traffic patrol, trail patrol or any of that, um, it's always a community-wide effort, and, you know, we still have our Thursday coffees. I was going to say, the mayor is unbelievable Starbucks. that you meet. <laughs> is it the third Thursday? Third Thursday. Of the month? Last, yes, last At, month was a challenge, but this month we'll be there. Third so. Thursday of the month at Starbucks. Um, anybody can come up, residents or anyone really from the Right, uh, yeah, we had they, um, Councilman Knight came to one of them. And uh, they talk to you about all kinds of issues. Oh, we have a lot of people who come. And uh, not always the same people, but there is a, a, a core group that really enjoys. And, and we enjoy, and I particularly enjoy hearing feedback from people at all times. So it's, and what time uh, do you meet in the morning? It's 10 a.m. at Starbucks at Golden Cove. I mean, the most beautiful Starbucks in the world. Well, good. I have not dropped in on one of your meetings as a resident. I'll come not as a TV oh, resident. My concerns is a CV resident things that we have happening there. Yes. One thing we had happened there was um, I was sitting at home and uh, this past week, and I heard a lot of activity and I uh, noticed all the cars, the engines, and the ambulance was going down to Portuguese Bend Beach Club across from my house. Yeah. And the first thing I thought was, oh, my goodness, what has happened? My son's down there because he was down there boogie boarding, and it was 
the fact oh, that we had a small we aircraft worry about our kids. that crash landed on the beach. And right. We also have that. So what were your <laughs> thoughts on that when you heard that? I know that it was... Well, I, I think, uh, you yeah, know, I mean, fortunately, the person walked away with, with without any serious injuries, but you know, supposedly he was carrying a banner. Um, you know, there, we on, on the city and on the council, and I'm on the noise abatement committee, we are concerned about planes and helicopters along the coastline, and I think this is an indicator that we really have to pay special attention to this. Right. They were Sound that. decibel levels, right. flying over the peninsula at night, all that. Well, after that happened, now I've noticed every day at about 1140, um, just before lunchtime, there are two small you know, those Piper planes carrying the banners. and I have, Oh, they are. Oh, daily. Yeah, they've oh. been coming by ad, doing their advertising. So um, I hadn't really paid attention to it till after that um, unfortunate accident. But Well, maybe we'll have, have to, to check in on that. Closely, Make that a future agenda item. Yeah. Um, another thing would be great if you could update us on is what's going on with updating the general plan. That's one of your oh. city goals, isn't it, that you're working on? You know, on? the general plan has been a goal since day one. I mean, I, I wish um, I could have brought it with me. I have the original general plan, and it's 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 kind of the Bible of the city, but it is an evolving document, so to the extent that in sort of like constantly a New Testament or something. <laughs> but it is... Uh, it and things do change. Regulatory controls change. Um, you know, new ordinances and codes come in. But I have to really give a lot of credit to the Planning Commission here because, eight, oh, first of all, we've had 86 public meetings in this ongoing multi-year process where it does have to be changed periodically. 20 years ago, we were changing it then too for the first right. 20. So. Uh, 45 of those meetings, the, of those 86 meetings, took place with the Planning Commission. And they really have a very good understanding of what the city is about and its core principles, and, and I'll do the, down to the details. So that'll be coming to us, I believe, early next year or late um, in, in the fall, okay. early well, winter. And for you to look through that, I think, because you, you were on the council, you were a mayor back 20 years ago, and you see what are the challenges and all the... What, what the city faces today, you can really kind of see and have perspective, I would think, on what might need to be updated. Do you feel? Right, well, and that, and also this still has to go through a CEQA review, you know, California, California Environmental Quality Act. So once it goes through all that review, it'll come back to us and we'll, right. we'll get a better look at it. Okay. So that'd be good. We were just given the draft document. Um, at the council meeting, at the end of the council meeting, so I haven't had a chance to right. go through the whole I thing. I think I was reading here in notes that it says that uh, you want to present the update to the council in early 2014. So right, got some time. right. Um, moving, I don't know if there's any things that are that it came up at, during the summer with the council. Oh, Before mm. we move on to some more summertime fun things that you got to do, I don't know if, I'm, if there's any other issues you want to update residents on, and then other than... I thought I know that you've just had, you've been a busy mayor as always. You just took a cruise with the sanitation district. Well, yeah, it wasn't a cruise. It was a boat trip, and actually, of the thirty people that um, we had on the trip, about ten of them got sick. So it wasn't a cruise. Cruise. It, it's the Ocean Sentinel. And twenty years ago, I did this. As, when you're on the sanitation district board, usually the mayor is the sanitation district representative, and they have an alternate. And um, in, in our council, Councilman Mizzetich is my alternate. So um, we, a group of us, um, went on to the Ocean Sentinel, and I, I did this last year. We had my children there when they were young, and it was fascinating then, and it's just as fascinating now, but they're more, um, they're more coordinated right now. They have a, a just, they're really educational. People walked away. They did not know what they were going to get. Some people thought, is this a real estate tour? What is this? You're on what is the equivalent of kind of like a nice fishing boat. So don't think you're on a cruise. Right. You know, you're not on a cabin cruise or anything. But it is, um, it takes you out to the outfall. Because in 1972, we had the Montrose Chemical Company, which were the larger pur largest purveyors of DDT at the time, found out that it was now illegal in the world and in the United States at least, and they were, rep they were producing this for the world. 
Well, they dumped it all out into the ocean at the Alf Fall. So seven and a half miles long of DDT is sitting at the base along with a one and a half to two miles wide. Right on the so, TV shelf. Right? right on our shelf there. So what's happened is over the evolving years, the past 40 years, um, they've been putting particulate matter out and effluent in order, a certain degree in order to cover it. And the Superfund was created um, as a, a EPA urgency ordinance. And right now, the studies are continual. You know, there was a time they were going to put cement, but they realized that would disrupt the TDT. But one of the reasons for doing these expeditions is they dredge. They take us to the outfall where it comes out, and then they pull up the species. And, you know, you could see how healthy the sea life is underneath. Now, it wasn't for 15 years. Those first 15 years were pretty awful. And this is they were pulling up some really gruesome things. But right now, um, actually, they and the question was asked, where's the safe place to swim in, uh, is it safe to, sw where's it safe to swim in the South Bay? And you know what they said? Palos Verdes. Wow. They thought it was safe to swim, like in the areas, or at least going to the water of, you know, down in that south portion there. So, so the water there is clean. So, but these efforts to sort of mitigate and clean up, that's overseen by the sanitation district? Are they part yes, of that Yes, they process? oversee it. And we're in the district. We have, we represent two districts, the South Bay District and District 5. And in so, in so doing, right now, we're in the process of closing the Puente Hills landfill. Maybe, maybe people don't think about this, but where does all your trash go? You know, there are, so there are going to be five different locations because this was the drop dead date 30 years ago was that it was going to be closed October 31st. So we are, it's going to be closed. A certain portion may be extended and ordinance is coming in uh, at our next meeting in uh, two weeks. But it's key because people need to know that um, we have the DART facility. So we'll be paying about the same amount of money, maybe a little more eventually, but this trash has to go somewhere, and Puente Hills is filled. One of the directors for the Sanitation District, because you're mayor, is this a monthly meeting you have to attend? Yes, or? it is a monthly meeting, and uh, we attend with the various South Bay mayors. We go to, it's always been at Torrance City Hall, and uh, right now the chair is Carl Jacobson. He's on the city council in El Segundo. He's been there for many years. So um, it, it, we are, we're briefed. We... Um, Sometimes there's litigation and other issues, but um, it's a big budget, it's a big ticket item, and they are really doing their work. And when you take this trip and you see what is down there, you get a huge education and real appreciation for the staff. So interesting. we've gotten so many kudos. I mean, people who went, and I just sent them a, a thank you letter because it was so, so when educational. So it comes to issues you're going to bring to them about the peninsula issues and for our PV, is it going to be about that shelf? Will it be other items that you're going to well, talk about? Well, we talk about that, but what we really do is they present to us budgetary items. And there's uh, always a lot of activities that have to do with w the disbursement of what trash is going where. You you wouldn't think about it, but someday we should go know, over to Puente Hills. I think that be a field trip Mayor Brooks, we, Mayor Grandmother Brooks. It's Brooks fascinating to, to see how they can take sewage and then run it through all yeah. the trays, and then you can actually drink it at the end. Yeah, I think we take that for granted that they're out there doing that work. We, I would like to do it's that. It's amazing. Um, we'll put that on the calendar, which is a to -do already list. filled up. And yours was this summer, so you and I were talking some of the things that you attended this summer. Um, the Freedom For You fundraiser, obviously, an incredible right. I was able to stop by for, yeah, for a short time while we were looking for an emergency care place for my thumb. But, um, <laughs> The mayor had hurt her finger, so you didn't caught stay it long. caught in one of those you didn't blade stay long at the jazz things. fest there. But it's a yeah, great but it cause was uh, it was for you. Uh, Greg Allen um, has a great program there. Uh, he's very dedicated to our youth and uh, is to be commended for that. Um, so it was just a lovely wow. I could see the afternoon people picnicking. It was hot everywhere else. But it wasn't hot there. That was a beautiful day. And it then was, it went over to Trump, and they were doing their. It was at the end of their. Beer, wine, they had their annual and, beer and wine festival. Yes, it was their fifth annual. And, and this is the fifth annual one, and it's it's changed a little since considerably since the first ones. But I will say that it was so hot over there at Trump, and yet over at Ternea, it was cool. And I think the, it was, was 
Gorgeous Probably to be the on. Venue. I was at both events as well. Yeah, and I was just have, there for a short time. To have the um, have spectacular views behind you, see community coming together. Oh gosh, it was really and having a great time. And we just re you keep being reminded how, as you say, we're living in paradise. We are. And um, to, and it was they were really two really special events. Um, and because we're talking about Trump, the next party we'll all be at is uh, oh, Saturday, cool, September seventh. Yes. Happy birthday, RPV. We have our tropical. Our tropical, is it a tropical founders. Oh yes, it's you tropical don't know the theme. theme. I did not know the that. The theme is yes, it's tropical. So it's very casual, tropical, and it's, it's going to be a party for the founders to really recognize the, the founders, founders for the, the people of who the city. helped to put the city together. And uh, and you're going to be doing some interviews with some of them, and that yeah. will be wonderful. I so. feel really fortunate this year um, as a resident, as being able to take the time to really study and learn more about the history. Forty years later of really what those founders, when it was a completely community peninsula-wide effort, you know that, and uh, it took all the cities, you know, whether it was Fred Hess, right, and Rolling Hills, or, you know, Ernie Howlett, they just really, they had, everybody was out there knocking on doors because they wanted to make sure they got local control here, because otherwise yeah. the county would have overdeveloped this place, right? What would it have been like? Well, they said we would have looked like, um, would have been bigger Hong than Kong. Hong Kong. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's true. I mean, when I think about it, 43 fights... And here we are at 40 years old. Now, think about other cities. A lot of cities don't really recognize their birthdays as much because it's not a big deal for them. It's a big deal for us because of what these people went through. And the, right. the fact that we still have some of them with us um, to hear their stories and to make sure that these go down as a legacy is right. really, really going to be important because it, 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 speaks, it speaks volumes that... We are so excited that this city is thriving at this point. Right, and to be able to preserve the vision and the dream of the founders. You feel absolutely. like that's happened. I do. I do. I think that they would be absolutely shocked to see how spectacular this has become. We, we've got, we're still able to maintain the fiscal prudence of the city and be a world-class resort community at the same time. And where else do you see that? Right. Name one place. <laughs> well, one place if the community wants to learn more about the city's history on our website, which is fantastic, the, um, the web website for the city, there is a history section. And you can go oh, that's and right. Check and it out. Yeah, that's and always good. Also our website is Other awesome. information of all the great things happening. Um, and anything you want to, we're sort of wrapping it up. Is there anything we want to make sure the community knows more about that's going on in RPV and what the council's got coming up next or things on your plate? Well, no, I think, I think the key is going to be to know that um, we're actually we're going to have an emergency preparedness uh, disaster drill at uh, September 26th. So, at City know, Hall. Yes, at City Hall. So these things take place. We have so many good committees out there. And, you know, I also we do mayor's breakfasts, and uh, they take place at Coco's. I actually started them 20 years ago when I was mayor. They didn't do them, and they continued them for those 20 years. And I'm really pleased to see that they did. Um, we learn so much at them, and it's another opportunity, just like those coffees, um, where you get to hear other people's perspectives, and it becomes a mini, they become mini think tanks of, of concerned individuals, and clearly these are community leaders, they're the chairman of the commissions and committees, and um, they're golden group, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a intense year when you're mayor, um, but if you really take it and grasp it and, you know, wrap your arms around it, I mean, you get so much out of it, and hopefully the people are going to be the, the great recipients, and that's my goal. Right. And we, we were lucky that we, we, we got to have, you know, go at this 20 years ago because, you know, you'll be able to be a, you're a veteran at it now, so. Well, to some extent. Not as veteran as some other people. <laughs> and, um, well, we always appreciate that you come in here and take the time out, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you around the community, and I'll see you at the Founders Party. Thank you, Liz. Thank Aloha. You. Aloha. Mahalo. Oh, mahalo. Mahalo. No, mahalo. That's right. Thank this you, my daughter from All right. Hawaii. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City <laughs> Talk. It's great to be here with Mayor Susan Brooks, and have a great day out there, everyone. Thanks for watching.